So now we go a little bit more on the details of the profiles. And we will be mentioning here the difference between CGMS 3 and, and 2.4. So for this first session, we have the, the three profiles here on the very close to the equipment, so equipment, operation, and short circuit. Next uh, session on Tuesday, we will have the other uh, profiles in the same um, way presented. So if we go to the next slide, Eduardo. Yeah, so the main uh, changes we have in these profiles are described in the Annex A of the part of the standard. So there's a big uh, uh, table there uh, per profile, and there are some summary in the beginning before the tables of uh, the main points. So that's definitely one very good source of information to go there and, um, and look, especially for the people that uh, already have CGMS 2.4, and see what changed to, to go to the GMS3. But also for uh, people from utilities, from the TSOs and DSOs of the research institutes, if they uh, want to see if a given problem was, was fixed. So in the tables in the annex, in most of the cases, there are references also of the reason of the change, either being to align between um, CGMS and other international standard part of the 400 series or um, references to, to, to existing issues, which was uh, which was fixed. Then we have uh, the change of the namespace and the profile uh, URIs. So the string which identifies the the profile and the sim namespace changed uh, from sim 16 to this uh, sim 100 uh, URI. This is what was traditionally happening with every uh, sim version starting from version one. Uh, every two, three years, depending on the cycle of release of new uh, sim version, the sim namespace and is changing. We th there is some plans, but that's more for for future uh, to see to stabilize uh, this namespace. But let's see if this uh, gets adopted in the in the IC community. Uh, then we have the namespace of the extensions. As you know, uh, both CGMS 2.4 and CGMS uh, 3 uh, is, are using uh, a set of uh, extensions. And before the prefix for uh, the extensions was n e and that was a logical uh, thing to do when uh, the, the specification at that time when it was created was uh, driven by n e but then when it became um, IC uh, specification and then the standard, then it was uh, changed to, to European. So we have the EU as a prefix and the namespace is not anymore um, NCE.EU, something like that, but it's under the, the IC. The Profile URIs that are declared in the in the header of the instance files. These are also changed, and I put here on the slide the the three new one, and they are also referring to uh, to IC. So for some uh, people, this uh, or for some applications or developers, this change can be seen as a as a big change and for some other it's relatively a minor so it depends how how the people are implementing um, uh, the parsing of the information and how your internal uh, model is interacting with uh, 
with what to import and how is the linkage with the, with the sim. So they, they, there are here different concepts and depending on that, uh, people have different uh, development effort. But in general, um, we know that, as Tanya said, there are always things to change, there are always things to, to improve in the standard, and we shouldn't uh, run in a situation where like uh, changing of a profile URI or changing of something uh, holds us to, uh, to actually uh, use it. So the implementations should be done in a way that allows you to um, to have more flexibility here. Uh, so one of the, the reasons also why we have a difference between and the, the profile uh, URIs between the 400 series of standard and the, the 600 is because the, the CGMS, the 600 um, series, is using uh, some extensions so to to make to make the difference uh, we have these different uh, identifications of the profiles and in addition there are some around 10 constraints that are uh, added more to the to the 600 the tendency is that if one day uh, CGMS as a standard can fully rely on the 400 series. Of course, it can fully adopt the whole profile and then we don't have the, uh, any uh, difference. Okay, maybe we can go to the next one. Yeah, so in that bullet point list, we have some of the most visible changes. So one of them is the HVDC model. So that was heavily qualified in terms of uh, uh, description of the classes and attributes and cardinalities because the, the control of the HVDC model as designed in the CGMS 2.4 was requiring uh, too many attributes which were not necessarily um, valid uh, when you exchange different control of the converters. And this was causing a lot of uh, confusion. Uh, what value you, you should put on the export if you actually, if you're on another uh, control. And this was causing a lot of um, uh, interoperability issues. And in addition, some, some of the uh, converters controls were not uh, available. So definitely for people that are implementing um, HVDC exchanges, uh, then it's advisable to, to go as soon as possible to, uh, to CGMS3. And even with CGMS3, we are sure that HVDC are not fully covered, but as we know, the technology is developing, the grid configuration on the HVDC site is developing, so there will be more changes uh, coming. Um, then looking at the, the three profiles, uh, so here in CGMS 2.4, uh, the, the three, the equipment, uh, short circuit and operation profiles were done actually in one package, and uh, Three profiles were split by using uh, special stereotypes of the classes. So we had still the three profiles in CGMS 2.4, but the mechanism, how they were separated was, was different. So what was done in, in the present um, CGMS 3 is to se fully separate in different uh, uh, packages and make a clear distinguish and distinction between the and the profiles and this follows exactly same concept that is applied for 400 uh, series of standard this is not uh, something which is a uh, uh, cgms uh, specific uh, 
then there have been a lot of discussion um, how to improve the split between the equipment and the operation. And a lot of classes were um, actually moved from the operation profile to the equipment profile. And one important change is the, the connectivity node and, and the schedules which were kind of split between the core equipment and uh, operation. So currently in the operation profile, uh, and uh, Tanya already mentioned on that, we have only the measurement classes which are adding on top, and in the short circuit profile, we have the additional short circuit data that is added to the equipment. And the whole um, connectivity for the node breaker model, it's uh, part of the, the core equipment. And there was a question uh, here also in the in the chat, and, and I think deserves also special attention to, to mention, is that by deprecating a, a, a profile or by deleting a profile, what it happened, for example, for the topology boundary, and we deprecated um, equipment boundary, it doesn't mean that we don't have uh, instance, instance data for, for that. So what was done is that all the uh, necessary alignment was done between the equipment boundary profile and the main equipment profile. So this allows you to actually use the main equipment profile to express um, boundary set instance data for the for the equipment part. So there's not really any um, uh, lost is is just that the for example in the in the header of the boundary equipment instance file you will not see equipment boundary profile but you will see equipment profile but you can still have the same amount and it's advisable to have uh, less um, classes in the in the boundary Another very important uh, point we have here uh, on the equipment is the containment rules. And that was also the first uh, standard which include all the all the containment rules um, for for all the equipment. Before in previous standard and the, in the 400 series that was done on a little bit on the case by case uh, basis. While here we took all the classes and specified what are the possibilities, and this brought a lot of uh, good value for for it to be more interoperable between the, the applications. Uh, power electronics classes were added, so with modeling of the the wind or the the batteries, and so it's now possible in CGMS3. We also added the auxiliary equipment um, classes like a potential transformer or a current transformer. So all these that uh, are sometimes uh, useful to exchange for if those elements become uh, constraining for, for limits or other uh, purposes. An additional very important step that was done with CGMS3 is to fully uh, align between the 400 series of standard and, and CGMS3 uh, to, to avoid the situation if we have too many contradictions. So now what you will see is basically if you take out the, a few extensions from, from CGMS3, actually the the application can fully support the 452 equipment uh, profiles. Equipment in surface uh, attribute was added, so that was something that was necessary and present in many issues in, in the last six, seven years. 
Uh, so that's why I listed here as a kind of a special one to, to highlight. If we go to the next slide. So a moment to, to spend here on what extensions we have in this uh, trip profiles. So we have the extensions on the identified object, bringing uh, two additional uh, attributes, the energy identification code and the short name. But know that this was preserved to be somehow compatible with the treatment in uh, CGMS 2.4. So these two attributes were uh, uh, deprecated and in which means that in the future um, releases uh, they can be uh, deleted. Then we have uh, the boundary point uh, class, which you also see on the, on the screenshot here. So the only purpose of this class is to designate a given connectivity node as a boundary point. So something that was very uh, done in a kind of a messy way in the CGMS 2.4, where there were additional attributes on the connectivity node, depending on which profile that connectivity node is sitting. So this, this way here of adding a class to be associated with the connectivity node was um, appreciated by the by the community and an easy way to um, to basically flag um, certain connectivity nodes that they are boundaries. We have then two classes, the, the wind uh, power plant and the solar power plant, which were also added, not yet adopted in the uh, 400 series of standard, perhaps in the next uh, iteration. And there is uh, uh, an extension of the operational limit type, which brings uh, the specific types of the of the limits. In CGMS 2.4, uh, that was existing as well, but just the name of the attribute and the name of the enumerations were different. If you go to the next, I think that's the last of the highlights. So we the other important um, change that happened in CGMS 3 is around the, the limits. Uh, Tanya mentioned already that uh, limits were moved and they can be exchanged also in the in the SSH profile. So here looking at the equipment, the change you see is that the Actually, don't have the, the limit on the slide, but the, the normal, the, the value that was before was renamed to a normal value. So if, if you if you know CGMS 2.4 and you have value exchange in, um, in the equipment, so in CGMS 3, that would be a normal value and the value uh, that can change every hour if you want. Uh, can be exchanged in the SSH. Um, we also made the association with uh, the terminal as required, <clears throat> and that was also done cons in a consistent uh, way, also the same way in the 400 uh, series of standard. A new uh, Boolean, so is infinite duration, was also added to the type to be able to distinguish better between the permanent and temporary limits. There were a lot of questions of when you need to provide acceptable duration, when not. So this uh, Boolean there is helping to uh, improve the understanding. And as I mentioned, the, the enumeration, the limit kind was uh, renamed. And I think a few uh, values like uh, Stability was uh, was added in, in CGMS 3. I think Eduardo, this should be maybe the last. This slide. is all. 